Hi, I'm Tim Berglund with Confluent here to tell you all about Apache Kafka 3.0. Cut. You know what? Um, I don't really think the cutout's working. Yeah, you know, I think you might be right. You know what? I'll just do it. Okay. Apache Kafka 3.1 release video, take 11. And action. Hi, I'm Danica Fine with Confluent, here to tell you what's new in Apache Kafka 3.1. We've got a lot of great kips in this release, but we'll stick to just covering a handful of the main ones from both Kafka Core and Kafka Streams. Let's dive in. First up, we have KIP 748, which brings us a couple new broker count metrics, fenced broker count and active broker count. These will be exposed by both the Craft and Zookeeper controllers, but the values will differ slightly depending on which you're using, so keep that in mind. But the bottom line is that they both will respectively expose the number of active brokers in the cluster known by the controller and the number of fenced brokers known by the controller. Occasionally, a broker may be alive but unable to establish new connections, emit metrics, or emit logs due to failed DNS resolution. This condition can be hard to detect if the broker is not emitting metrics or logs. So as you can imagine, these metrics are a great addition to the host of other broker metrics already available to you. Next, we have KIP 768 that extends SASL OAuth bearer with support for OIDC. The industry is rallying around the OAuth OIDC framework for authorization and authentication, so naturally it made sense to incorporate it here. The work in this KIP might sound familiar as the design and groundwork for supporting this was completed as part of KIP 255, but that wasn't quite a production-ready implementation. KIP 768 finally implements the necessary production-grade interfaces to allow for an out-of-the-box configuration by any Kafka user to connect to many popular external identity providers like Okta and Auth0. Rounding out the Kafka core KIPs is KIP 773, which provides some consistency in the way client metrics are named, specifically where millis and nanos are involved. A handful of metrics will be reintroduced with new names that reflect this. Buffer pull wait time total, IO wait time total and IO time total will now include NS for nanoseconds. The metrics without NS in their name will be available for backwards compatibility only. They are marked deprecated and will be deleted in the next release. Now for Kafka streams. KIP 763 and KIP 766 come together to make it possible to query state stores for ranges of values, but now with open endpoints. This of course makes it possible to select a range greater than or less than a value. The functionality is available in both the read-only key value store and read-only session store. Finally, KIP 775 allows you to use custom partitioners in your foreign key joins. Prior to this KIP, both the primary table and the foreign key table had to be partitioned using the default partitioner. To make this new functionality possible, the custom partitioners will be passed into a new table joined object, which extends named operation. Note that any foreign key join methods that take in named operation will be deprecated moving forward. They will instead take in the table joined object. All right, that's all I have for now. As I said, there are quite a few other KIPs involved in this release. So as usual, I encourage you to head on over to our Confluent blog or take a look at the release notes to check them out in more detail. Can't wait to see what you build. Mm -hmm.